Hello, Econ students. Today, let's talk about the functions of money. In the absence of money, primitive societies have to rely on barter. Barter is the direct exchange of one good for another. I have green beans, you have blue jeans, and we hope to make a trade. The problem with barter is that it requires the double coincidence of wants, which means I have to want what you have and you have to want what I have. So it's like getting married. It's not enough if just one person wants to do it. Both people have to want to engage in the transaction. So it's difficult to find sometimes a trading partner. In fact, it's very difficult in barter to find somebody who has what you want and wants what you have. So because it's so hard to find someone to trade with, barter is inefficient and it's slow and you get few transactions. A lot of people resort to subsistence farming, trying to produce everything they need for themselves. And that's the hallmark of a primitive society. You see that a lot in um, sub-Saharan Africa, for example. Money eliminates the problem of barter and slow transactions. Primarily, money acts as a medium of, of exchange, and it is generally accepted in exchange for goods and services or in the repayment of debt. And what does this do for a society? It speeds up transactions. It, it enables you to have a lot more transactions because it doesn't require the double coincidence of want. If I have green beans, I simply exchange them for uh, someone who wants green beans and they give me money. I take the, green, uh, the money and go shopping for whatever I want. It's much easier than shopping with green beans. Um, and because it speeds up transactions and makes transactions so much easier, because money is generally accepted, it enables societies to develop the specialization of labor, where you specialize in the thing that you do best you get paid money for it and you use the money to buy the things that it's difficult for you to produce. That's the primary function of money. Money also serves as a unit of account. When you have a lot of goods and you're trying to barter one for the other, those trading ratios are cumbersome, they're confusing, and it's very hard to keep track of. How many green beans does it take to make a pair of blue jeans? How many blue jeans does it take to make a new trash can. So it's very difficult to trade. Money solves that problem. Everything is priced in terms of money. It makes pricing much simpler and it's easy to compare the relative value of goods and services. Finally, money serves as a store of value. Unlike green beans, money doesn't go bad in a few weeks. And because you can store money and accumulate it over time, it enables you to defer payment for goods that you want to buy in the future. So these two functions act together to enable us to save and to time our purchases better. So in order for an economy to become, uh, to, to, to grow and become sophisticated, it is necessary to have a money. And as long as the people in the economy agree that something is money, then it serves as money. See you next time.